in case I say something, you know. Well, you all say something. <laughs> That's right. You got. We're not hearing you, Oscar. Oh wait. So, Oscar, you look like you're in Palmdale. Yeah, I'm. Ne I parked next to Steve Van. Is Steve because there? He no, he's still in Illinois. How'd you he's How'd you get in? Did George let you in? Yeah, George let me in. So that's why I'm staying here. I want. I want to stay there for the, my first week too. Yes. Ask, you know, I, you have to ask. It's not my, it's not my cold, my place to yeah, say. Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not that close with uh, George and, uh, and um, what's her name? I can't. Daryl. And Daryl, thank you. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel I can ask them. Oh. Even though I, that's probably silly. I could yeah. ask Steve, do you, do you need, is, there's a code to get in. Yeah, but it's a, uh, do you, they come and check to see you actually staying with somebody because they asked me already. And so, you said you're staying with, with George, George, George. George. I mean, I know I can ask them, but, you know. So. That's the only thing. But it's. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's like it alternates between raining and snowing here. Yesterday was my worst firing day in years. It was horrible. I actually went backwards. I, I took good pieces and fired them again, and they came out. They came out crummy. So today, when I looked outside and it was snowing, I said, well, I'm going to do other things. But it only snowed for a half hour, but I was already committed to, uh, you know, oil change and getting my clothes clean for the trip and buying stuff that I need. So that's what today was. Uh, I I need to take the band for oil change and... Uh... Oh, I did that tomorrow. I almost stopped at the Chevy dealer uh, to look to look at their vehicles, but I decided not to. the the uh, price The price is starting to go down. Oh, well, thank God! I know. If I could only last, you know, another if I could last another month or two. Hey, one good thing. I got my uh my cards today. It was they're supposed to be here on the 20th and they arrived today. What cards? You know, that you pass out, you know, oh, a, business a, cards. Business cards. You know, so that people can call you unmercifully uh with spam phone calls. <laughs> yeah. So like a business cards. That that's yeah. what you I nope. put I, I put my phone number back on the card. So, um, so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep them close to my, you know, I'm not going to have them out on the table. I'm going to have them, uh, you know, if somebody just walks up and wants my card, I'm going to tell them, no, I'm only giving the cards out to customers and potential customers. Sell them for a dollar each. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, that would be nice. Do you know what I did different so far? It's like I, I, I put it next to my chair. And people actually have to ask me if I have a, a business card. Yeah. And and I don't give it to, you know, sometimes the kids ask me, and I will, but I don't have no kids asking me stuff yet. But that's going to change. Yeah. Well, I, I kept my phone, I kept my phone number off my card for about five years. And it was great. It kept the, uh, kept the, uh, the scammer, the spammers away. But yeah. Put your yeah. Facebook page on it. Yeah, that's a good one. Considering it's hacked, and they can, that'll it'll get them good. <laughs> and there's Bonnie. Hey, Bonnie. Hey. And we have a new artist here. Wendy Franklin is here today. Hi, 
Wendy. Hi. We need a face. I'm, I'm multitasking, so I'm going to stay off the video, but it's good to be here. No way. <laughs> <laughs> we need to see you. Don't ask me why. I have no idea why. But... Okay, give me a second, and I'll I'll pop back on in real life when I get to a parking lot. Oh, she's driving. Ah, parking lot. Yeah, multitasking. Like Oscar. I'm not driving. Oscar's not going not, not anywhere. Now, but He's you sitting on when you drove. He's no. sitting in his home. I, I, I don't recall ever driving and zooming at the same time. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could see it moving past your window. <laughs> really? I, I think that that's the screen going like that. <laughs> Yeah. Bonnie, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm good. I'm just trying to figure out this. I'm trying to, I am trying to find the perfect Zoom Oops, location. Yeah, me too. Okay. I'm ready. Oh, just to let you know, Barry, that's the first day I can use shorts in Florida. <laughs> Great. Hey, I wear shorts all year long. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oscar, I can't wait to put on a pair of shorts and a in a, a t shirt or shirt sleeve shirt. Well, so that's the first thing I can do it. I tell you. It, no, it was. It On Sunday, the temperature never went above 64 degrees. It was cold, like a spring. It would feel like a wearing, I was wearing my sweater, my spring jacket, my head, my my hat for the winter, and I was using my gloves most of the morning. And the morning was 64 degrees. degrees is a heat wave up here. Oh, it was 34 degrees. In the morning on 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 Sunday morning, and then you get frozen a advisor the next morning from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. It was going to be 32, 33, 34 at the most. Ooh. Well, and it's that's in Bonita. <laughs> well, it's we almost in the in the end of. <laughs> It's chilly here in Michigan, but we have had no snow. It is the weirdest winter ever. Speak for yourself. We had two snowstorms. Um, the last one, like 22 inches, but two days later, it was totally gone. And now we've had no snow in January, but we've had a lot of rain. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt the rain because it's it's that cold. Means it's For me, it's in the thirties and it's raining, so you get wet and then it's, you know, you know. Look, the only is, uh, it is uh, you get black eyes. That's the only drawback about that. Uh, that's the worst. We're having floods here. <laughs> Oh, you are. Yes, definitely. <laughs> they are said you... California is an ocean at the moment all along the coast. Are you okay where you are? Where we are, yeah, because we've only been getting the edge and I'm our house is on a hill, so it would have to come in and rise a, a whole lot before we were affected personally. <laughs> But uh, yeah. there's parts of town, in fact, fairly close to me. They said, don't go out unless you have to, because the roads are closed. Uh, people still try to drive through it, and, you know, <laughs> the water's up to their, uh, you know, window. <laughs> so you went from drought conditions to yep. torrential rains. Yep, yep. Atmospheric river. Yeah, it's it's a very strange term. I well, okay. 
I think it's a very strange term. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's, we're supposed to be, today is supposed to be the last day. It's supposed to be raining for a few days. They said Thursday there might be scattered showers. And then as far as they know, it's going to be dry for a while. But uh, a lot of the reservoirs are at capacity now, but they can't catch everything because it's coming down so fast that we've had a lot of mudslides they said there's mm -hmm. been over 500 uh landslides from due to the rain in california big holes opening up are you guys getting snowing in the mountains yeah 10 inches in one area that they reported, <coughs> which is way high uh, and that's been within like a week. So, and then Tijuana is having a lot of problems. Uh, the mudslides there knocked down a wall in a house and killed two kids that were in the room. Oh, oh, oh please. There's ro there's roads being that are caving in in California. There's what? Roads. I saw these roads ca uh, caved in. Oh, yeah, yeah. The sinkholes. Yeah, it washes under them and um uh, houses near the beach their first floor is gone <laughs> essentially yeah, but if Tijuana is being affected is that going to affect tequila production uh no that's farther south that they make that ole, ole. but Tijuana has a lot of factories that are actually American factories they just put them down there for uh tax advantages labor market so how's the government out there in California to help people like this in this situation? Are they pretty good? Well, we had stuff in place, and now uh, Biden's supposed to be here Thursday or something to look at it and, you know, send some federal money for some of it. But uh, I don't know exactly what that's going to do. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. Repair the roads, I suppose. Some of those are interstate highways, so guess it would be uh you know <laughs> something to do that you know the federal government would need to pay part of but um i know san diego you know for the last several years have been building reservoirs and they're also pumping it back into the aquifers that had been depleted local farmers said well they don't have to water <laughs> now for at least a month. Wow. People have their own little uh, rain storage stuff if they have any sort of uh, small agricultural thing going. Uh, so, yeah. Bonnie, how's, yeah. your, how's your show planning coming? It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> no problem <laughs> no problem at all easy in easy out everybody's really friends with everybody well we are i'm waiting for some news on the show today so i'm a little oh so everybody cross your fingers for us is is there a question because of covid oh no no it doesn't, what I'm waiting for doesn't affect this year at all. So, uh -huh. something we're trying. So, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, I, I really like my space that I got in Fort Myers. I think it's the best space I've ever had there. there. Where, were you? where am I? Yeah. Okay, uh, you know that main that middle section where the early where the Friday night people are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you go down to the T to the end and make a right, I'm like two or three booths in. I like that space. So you're not because you're not doing Friday night, right? No, no. Yeah. I found out that I did the same whether I did Friday night or or didn't. So yeah, it depends on the artist. Cool. Glad you like it. I do. I can also get there early, park on the outside, and dolly in, dolly you some stuff in. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know where you are in the sequence of uh, loading. It's eleven. It's I think it's a tw eleven thirty lineup. I think oh, I am. That's, that's the second batch. Yeah, so I can get the, I can get there at nine and dolly. Yep, yeah, you can all, dolly. all the work. You can certainly dolly from that location, which is just just as well, right? Yeah, it is. Not my department, so uh, I'll be around. But cool. I got to train those people who are helping with setup. But other than that, <laughs> so if something goes wrong, it's they, they. If something goes wrong, they didn't listen. I'm sure it wasn't me. <laughs> Isn't it nice to be able to say, you know? Not my concern. You got to try it, Bonnie. It's great. The transitions, <laughs> the transitions hard though. Transitions hard. Except yeah. everybody's going to think that she, it, the shared really runs it. She just passed the. No, don't no. say that. That's extremely <laughs> offensive to our executive director. That's and it's certainly not true. So well, I I say it in jest. I yeah. know you do, but somebody might not think so. Quiet. This group has nothing to say. I tell you, I'm quiet today. Me too. Okay, Oscar, where were you this past weekend? Bonita. How was and, it? Yeah. It was. It was packed, but a lot of people. There was some people buying, but I would say 90% of the people was uh, trigger shy. They like the work. They take measurements and everything else, but they was not ready to buy. It was weird. Oh. But that Do you was tell the, was visitors or year-round people? I think it was all the people that I saw was from Bonita. Who live here. So... It was interesting, but that was the census I got from a lot of people. Well, the friends oh. that I know, they, they, for the amount of time that they talk to people, you would think that they all have like a $20,000 insurance. That's how I feel. Oh. It, it, it was weird. Everybody walk out of there good, okay, but no fabulous. Interesting, because that's the first good show in Florida, so we wouldn't We've been yeah. waiting to see how they did. I didn't get down there this weekend, so. Yeah, but it was packed. It was definitely packed. It was, people was out. Well, you couldn't have, added, it was pretty cold, but other than that, the weather was beautiful. It was just pretty cold. Yeah. It was like a, I think on Sunday, never went above 64. Yeah, yeah, it's cold for us. 32, 34 degrees. It was freaking cold. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> That's a heat wave, Oscar. <laughs> it, that's what I come to Florida to get away from that. I don't want to spill <laughs> anything like that. I'm supposed to be wearing shorts all the time. That night. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> you know, Bonnie. The last time I came up north early to do the uh, the garage sale, I had gotten used to the warm weather in Florida, and I just froze. I couldn't believe how cold it felt. Well, we will try to be warmer for you this year. Hey, listen, the last the last couple of weeks, it's been, uh, compared to last year, it's been great. It's been, in, I can't believe I'm going to say this. It's been in the 30s as opposed to like last year, it was 20 degrees was the high. When I was outside firing pots, it was horrible. Well, I, it's been a mild January. The month that you, you really don't want to be on North is next month. Don't say month. that. Don't <laughs> say that. <laughs> yeah, next month in Chicago gets a uh, minus 20 temperature for a couple of weeks without counting the windshield. So, no way in Calamus is going to be perfectly only minus 50. Calamus <laughs> is going to be in the 40s that day. <clears throat> 40? Yes, I, I hope so. <laughs> Maybe touching toward 50. I'd like um, it. And no snow. And no snow, and no <laughs> snow a week before. How's that? That's going to be perfect. You pulled that out. Works for me. 
works but, to me too. From your mouth to God's ear. Yep. <laughs> Did any of you do Naples um, New Year's show? No, I only have friends that did it. And uh, some people say that it was really, they, people walk out of there happy, but the setup and breakdown was really hard to do because new rules. Yeah. The That's what I heard. I did it for the first time. And, and um, it was my first ever show, Florida show too. And my first Naples. So it was a little bit of a learning curve. Like, a lot of we we dollied everything in. It was about three blocks, so it was a lot of work. Was it's, that intentional, or you just chose? But to the do weather that? was great. Did you no, have to dolly, or did you choose to do it? Careful. <laughs> Block. <laughs> was blocking streets. And then don't let people walk into close to the booth. So everybody had to kind of dolly in in some parts of the show. Oh. You know, I'm just glad that I didn't get in. <laughs> you know, I, I don't like doing the shows in Naples. There's a certain arrogance to the directors and the and everybody it's not the same as fort myers i mean i get there and i know everybody and i've known them for years and it's great and they're all like hey how you doing and oh. you know it's so it's friendly it's not it's not warm in naples you know personally and that's not that's not just the show i know i know in my in my that's, biased opinion as a fort myers person i'm with you on that i i agree But we welcome their attendance. I welcome their sales. <laughs> you know, I found that when I did okay in Naples, it was tourists. It was people that came from right. somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So if you're there that week, if they're that week when right. you're there, to depend on that, you know, because some years it's great and other years, you know, if the if the right tourist didn't show up, forget it, you know. But that's not true with every single show in Florida this summer of the year. Hmm. To a degree, but not really. Because most yeah. people come home down here. Oh. That's really quite a misnomer about Florida. Like our county, 600,000 people live here full time. Mm -hmm. You know, we swell up to more than that in the winter, but mm -hmm. 600,000 of us live here and 400,000 or so live in Naples. So. Yeah, we're a pretty big metropolis. We're not just a tourist destination. No, but one of the things I experienced in all the years I've done shows in Florida, kind of to what Oscar is saying, is that there's, to me, there's two kinds of people that go to Florida. The people that are retiring, divesting themselves of their homes up north, they're getting smaller homes, they're getting rid of a lot of stuff, and they're bringing with them most of what they need. They don't buy a lot of art, in my experience, that shows across Florida. The people that you really, especially with two-dimensional work or bigger ceramic work, are the, the uh, snowbirds buy second homes down there. They have big homes, big walls. If you can find those markets, those are great. But if you hit that first group of people, sales are tough. Like, like people will come to the show, they'll walk it. It's a social event. They'll have a good time. But they don't buy much art because they already have their walls full and their house full. What do you what do you guys think about that? Well, I put this year I'm I'm only I'm doing four shows only three weeks. I find that to be very efficient. One every weekend. I'm not expecting to do great on every every show. Uh, if I at least break even and have a couple really good shows, that makes my Florida, and that's basically the way I go into it every year. And, you know, and that works for me. Uh, a, a lot of times I'll you know this is the one of the shorter time periods that i'm going to be there because bonnie forced me to come back up north <laughs> but but uh, she shamed me into doing it which which was not really i'm just i'm just joking about that he's, he's just giving me grief it's loving it's loving grief it's not really <laughs> grief but anyway 
Listen, you think I would come back up north if I, uh, you know, if it wasn't going to be any happy to shame you into coming. (laughs) No problem. It was fun. I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. But, uh, you know, so I'm doing four events. And if two of them are really good, it makes my trip, you know, because there was a year, you know, the 2008 or 2009, when I actually spent $4,000 more than I took in. And it took a while to think about that. For, spend more money than I took in. So, um, you did know. you have a good time? Did you have a good time? It was warm. Oh, well. <laughs> Listen, I have a good time when I make money. I, you know, the good time, I can have a good time anywhere. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, Nick. Well, I think the other thing about Florida for artists to consider is that there are too many shows in Florida. Um, yeah. which takes away the urgency unlike mm-hmm. shows where there's only a small number in a town um particularly on the, well all over florida but um in the south and so i personally think that to help give urgency for yourself you pick what are you going to do on southwest coast what might you do on the southeast what might you do some orlando i don't know pick places so that you can say i'm not coming back to this area yeah we help create your own urgency that that I, I know there are artists because because we know the list in common who are do all the Naples shows, they do Fort Myers, they do all three Bonita shows. Well, you know, that's like every weekend for mm-hmm. two months or whatever. Um so then there's no urgency. You know, they're like, okay, I'm gonna see you again next week. So why should I bother mm-hmm. to decide now? So I would if, if I were an artist, I'd be careful about how how close together, how often. Um mm-hmm. yeah. And that is true. So I find that, like, one of the things that people was asking me, Bonita, if I was coming back to the second one, and my answer was, well, if, if God's allow us, I should be here, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this can happen, right? Good answer. <laughs> yeah, but it's not urgency, right? So, anyway, that's my opinion. Yeah, and I remember when every every place had one show, it was a total different Yep. vibe and yeah. everything you know yeah there's too many mm-hmm. but the problem I, I think with the too many concept because people say that i think about Florida, but they also say it about chicago is for us as artists when we're going to go any distance to do shows and we have to put together like various describing mm-hmm. series of show to make it worthwhile right. our fate is determined by the jurors what shows we get juried into and if there's less shows and you don't fill a weekend and then you've got a, a blank spot in your in your schedule, which is really difficult to deal with when you're traveling, because what do you do? It's not like you're going to go home and and produce new work or whatever. You're in a different state away from uh-huh. home. On the other hand, La- uh, Ron, Larry, yeah. on the other hand, Ron, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, if you if you have a, a, a weekend where you're not doing anything, you can always pick up a show if you know all the all the directors and stuff. I mean, you can always get one. So so th- there's that other side of it. But if um, they took away a lot of the shows, would that still be a possibility? No, but but then uh, my uh, my thought process would be different. You know, so? I'd love for them to take away a bunch of shows. Interesting that you bring up Chicago because there's a similarity in the in the model between Chicago and Florida. Um, without naming names or situations, uh, it's <laughs> Chicago and Florida are very similar. In that there are, you know, and we all know what I'm talking about. uh, Very. Florida, you got the whole state. Chicago fits in in Florida a few times, just to let you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, but but look at how many people are in Chicago, the Chicago area. I know, but they, you know, I, I, I honestly to God, I tell people, if you come into Chicago to do shows, you even the good show, you have to pair with something else. If you well, do it all, you pair with Freak the Salmon or Lake Front. Well, one of the things I found out in Chicago, because I ask people a lot when they come in my booth, uh, if they, what other shows they go to in Chicago. And I wish there weren't that many shows. I wish getting into shows that I wanted to get into was easier. But a lot of those people that I ask only do that show that I'm at, they don't go to other shows. The one exception mm-hmm. probably being fi- uh, 57, or not 57th Street, Old Town. Old Town. But Old outside Town. of that, 
they mm -hmm. often, there might be three shows within a 10 mile radius that they never go to. They do their own local show. Yeah. Now, yeah, the neighborhood. That's the thing. Yeah. That's maybe what I been... found in, go ahead. in Chicago. It seems like it's a neighborhood thing. Like yeah. people stick with their own little suburbs and didn't even, <laughs> wouldn't even know that I was going to be maybe 20 minutes away the next weekend had never heard of that show. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. With the same promoter. It was interesting. Well, doesn't that address I didn't feel the like advertising? I saw the same basis. Yeah, to a, good, to a good extent, you're right. Doesn't, does, doesn't right. that address the advertising the mm -hmm. show is doing if they can't reach people 20 miles away? Correct. And uh, to come to the show. People don't want to drive 20 minutes away. Well, it, well but also, so it's just a geography thing, I think, for Chicago, because it's, it's just so, you can get everything you need in suburb A, and you go over to suburb B, and you can get everything you need right there. It's not like, I'm from Indianapolis. I mean, you know, sometimes I'm going to the south side of Indy. Sometimes I'm going to the north side of Indy. But Chicago, it seems like they're just, they're hanging out in their little bubble. And they have everything yeah. they need in their little bubble. Right. And oh, I, yeah. I'm not sure that Amy doesn't do some of the stuff that Howard does in Florida, where they have a core of artists. And then to an extent that supports what you're saying is that if they go to this show where you're at and they go to the next show, there's going to see, they're going to see a lot of the same artists because that core of artists are juried in by the promoter every time. Would you agree? Yeah, it does. Yeah. But if you're dealing with, I, I would definitely non, agree with that. Pardon? If you're dealing with promoters that don't do that, that are more independent in their during process, then that doesn't happen. But as you're saying, Wendy, a lot of the people don't know that. They just think, oh, well, the same artist. If we go there next week, it'll be the same artist as here. No, depending on who the promoter is, may or may not. They see a lot of different new work. Can I just jump in here with a good point. Um, my little two cents worth back on Naples? Somebody went through and counted how many shows there were in the Naples area. And in one year, there were 67 art fairs wow. in the Naples area. Mm -hmm. So That's when you hear that, you know, they know, people know they can, you know, if they don't make it to one art fair, what the heck? They've got and another one the next weekend or to the next weekend or whatever. Yeah, that's 67. I you didn't know, think it was quite that high, but assuming that part's true, it's close to that. That's spread over four months, maybe. A little bit, maybe on five. Yeah. So, you know, it's more than it's more than two or three a weekend. And as Larry says, though, a lot of it doesn't it boil down to advertising how effective promoters are it's reaching out to say, hey, come to our show for this reason, because this is the quality of art. This is the kind of art we have you'll like it as opposed to just saying, Hey, we have an art show. Come on over. It, that's not great branding. I don't think, I think the shows that in Florida that do really well, like Naples, like winter park, like um, Fort Myers, um, they do a pretty good job of promoting their shows. Would you guys agree or not? No, you There's not a whole lot of shows in Fort Myers. I is that the, and we're the, only, that the one. only show? We're the, the only, only one. one. Yeah. We've been successful in keeping it that way. <laughs> yeah. And it's we have a pretty good, we have a pretty good lock on downtown to not allow anybody else on our footprint where Naples, you know, a couple of different people use that footprint. And then the other, the others are operated, I think, by people who were Naples directors and branched out to other areas. I think that's what they all are. How far are you from Bonita Springs, though? Us? Yeah. Oh, uh, from the side of their show, uh, downtown twenty miles, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't measured. It. I'd have to Google Map it, but something like that. Yeah, it's I, a I half hour, agree. forty minute drive. In the Punta Gorda have it shows too. They do, but they are. I don't think they have an art show. I think they are all craft events. I think. Oh. <laughs> They have no. an art fair. They have one. They have, do they have art too? 
Who? East River. And it's later. I did it once. It wasn't bad. So, Sharon, do you think other communities haven't kind of closed off options um, because of the communities they work with? That it's some of the communities I don't, just won't do that. I, I don't. I don't know. Um, you know, Bonita has its three shows all run by the, the Arts Center and they're fundraisers for the Arts Center. Mm -hmm. So they run three and then the Naples Center runs, I don't know, three and then those one day ones, four or five of those one day ones, something like that. Man. I don't know who runs the ones in the park, but they, but most of those 67 shows or whatever, it's it's locals in that park. Yeah, the local ones. The, the, those are the one day shows. Yeah, those are. Are um, they? They're one day. I'm pretty sure those are all one day. I don't swear to that, but yeah, a lot of those are for local. It's it's kind of a different, you know, support your local artist kind of thing as opposed to jury on a national basis kind of thing. I I think there's. It can be fine. It just depends on what you're doing. I think those are the ones, aren't they? That the director of the Naples, the other Naples shows said. If you want to get into one of the Naples shows, you have to do the mm -hmm. one day shows. Mm -hmm. That's all the same director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that was the scuttlebutt on the forums a while back. <laughs> right. That's all I know about them. Yeah, me too. So yeah, let but... me ask you a question. What What do you think? That, oh, doggies are coming. Does anybody have any input on what you think festivals can do better to support your sales? Yeah, keep track of what the, the public buys. Pay attention because I don't think most shows do. They how would we how would we do that? Put people at the exits, see what they're leaving with, maybe ask them questions. How, how was their experience? Who they buy from? See the kinds of things they buy. If you ran a store, would you not pay attention to what people walked out? Of, well, besides the receipts that you would have. Would you not pay attention to what people walked out of the store with? I would. That's a tall order, 200 artists later. But it's relevant, well, isn't it? Because it's money. saying that the public that came, this is what yeah. they buy. And but the artist, the artist could tell us that. If the artist would tell us what's selling well and what's not, that would be very helpful to our promotion. Do most yeah, but the artists will lie to get back in. Yeah, they yeah. will. I agree. Well, that, that promoters, I just want to share. Um, my answer to your question, Sharon, is to have the best artwork possible at your show. Mm -hmm. But best and, artwork, I, I agree partly with what you're saying, Barry, but is that which is more relevant, what jurors think is good artwork or what the public buys? Because the show, does it exist without buyers, patrons? Neither. <laughs> Excuse me. I would say neither, but now to answer that, um, I would have the best jurors possible and have them make the best decisions. I don't listen. The public, by and large, doesn't know what's good. What's good? I know I'm going to get in trouble for saying this, but you know, I mean, they don't know what they're looking at half the time, which isn't a bad thing because then you get to explain what you're doing and stuff like that. So, which means you engage with the public. But I find the public to not be that knowledgeable. But isn't the essence of buying art for the public, buying what they like, regardless of well, who I don't care it. about that. I'm a dinosaur. I want to see the best artwork, you know, which attracts the best buyers. That's my feeling, you know. Okay. Well, I would ask of every artist to chair if they think, one, they would be a good juror for their own art medium. And two, if they think they would be a good juror of other art mediums to help a show find out who's in who's the right artist to have in the show. So anybody wants to jump in, do you think you can jury your own category well? And can you jury other no. categories well? No. Yep. I think I can jury every category well. Me too. I guess I would ask a question to, to you, Ryan. Have you ever gone and watched a jury? Yeah, and I've juried. I've juried and I've been to live juries and I've watched back when they used to have the... Um, uh, the, the mock juries or that actually the juries that were some of them were mock and I know Larry used to be in on some of those too it was really interesting to watch how jurors juried and I talked to promoters that some some of which say they don't even attend their own jury they just turn it over to the jurors and then they're absent 
So whatever questions arise during the jury process, they're not there to answer what the director and what the show expects to be see done mm -hmm. in answering that question. And that's well, disturbing to me. Hopefully I don't do any of those shows or apply to any of those shows. I'm very, <laughs> I think I'm, no, really, I think I'm very careful as to what do I apply. But they're not dorky shows. They're good shows. They're good shows. Barry, Barry I would challenge you not so much. For, I, I, I wouldn't. I don't know how to dis to make the distinctions in in art, but in music there are people who love jazz, and there are people who love classical, and there are people who love rock and roll, and there are people who love rap, and there is great jazz, and there's great rock and roll, and there's mm -hmm. great classical, but there has to be some some divides along those sorts of of lines within an art as well that that a show appeals to people who an art show that appeals to love classical music is not going to be an art show that appeals to people who love rap music and vice versa and and with with artwork i i have i have my i have your answer because i thought of this uh, at least my answer i don't have the answer i have my answer but um <laughs> Uh, I think that no matter what, it's always fair because the same set of rules that any set of jurors do is the same for everybody. Um, so if you have, just to do the music analogy, if you have if you have jurors that all that like rap music but don't like classical or jazz, you're going to get a certain group of people. And the same thing if if you have um, jurors, uh, well, let's say you have architects and uh or store owners or you know gallery owners or des interior designers you're going to get a different uh set of um uh, the, except, of, uh artists yeah then let's say uh, uh museum curators so uh or you know or just artists that have mf um mbas so uh or M MA. Is that MFAs. A, you get an MA? MFAs. Anyway. MFA. So, MFA. But the thing, MFA, thank you. But the the thing is, it's 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 fair because it's the same for everybody that they're juring. It's just a different choice of 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 artists. And hopefully, <laughs> when I apply to something, it's my my guy, my my you know, <laughs> jurors. No, but, I did. But, but this this goes to the distinction between what this this is. You've just. Um, supported what Ron's been saying. Yeah, to me, artists, jur thank you. And I think you're right, Frank, because jurors to me are no different than critics. The critics never agree or rarely agree on a movie, on a play, on a restaurant, on anything. How can these people that are quote unquote experts make different decisions on the same thing that they're seeing? And the answer is they're, I don't think they're judging the exactly what what they're looking at. And, and to Sharon's point, if promoters wanted to know how well the public was responding, and this is not an easy thing to get because like Larry said, a lot of artists lie. But if they could go around and ask every artist in the show, I mean, every single artist for what their sales were, and tell them it has nothing to do with reporting it for taxes. It has nothing to do with whether you get back in the show next year. But take that data and compare it to what the juror scores were. And if you see a correlation that the jurors actually chose, well, that's great, but I bet you, heavy money, that a lot of those people they jury in will do very poorly because they're jurors, they're critics, they're giving you an opinion. They're not making, uh, a, a, I don't know how what the right phrasing is, but they're not making it, it's not a black or white situation. It's very- yeah, everybody has their own opinion. Exactly. Exactly. And that's all the jurors, that's all the jurors are doing is giving their opinion. It has yes. nothing to do with the quality, most of the time, I don't think, of the art. And again, if the public looks at the work and walks away from it, you failed because the public didn't like what was chosen. If the public buys in quantity and they love it, did you not achieve what you were what your target was, which was to lay a palette of art at an art show, which is specifically about art that the people wanted to buy. Oklahoma. Well, if we want to, if we want to do that, then we need to change our prospectus. Uh, most of the shows I know say that they're picking based on the quality of art, not on what sells. Right. If we were going to pick on what sells, 
our jury would probably be composed of interior designers and, um, and, and people out of the public. And it's not. But, you know, if you're advocating for us to change our perspectives to say that, I guess shows could do that. I'm not sure that there are not I a don't lot want of other that. artists that don't say that say you should be picking on quality. I mean, I don't want that. I don't ever but, want that. But I think what listen to that. But what Frank's I mean, saying, what I'm saying is quality is a nebulous concept. It's not a black or white concept. It's not. Well, I'm, it's I'm, not. I'm, I'm, That's I'm, why there are degrees in it. That's why their libraries full of what is good art. That you know, it's it's defined. It's not. No, a, it's not. Thing. You go look throughout the, the internet, Nonsense. throughout libraries. The definition of art is not defined. It has been I, art for hundreds of years. Oh, really? Artists are yes, and artists argue about. What the definition of art is, they'll say, "Well, that person's not really an artist." Well, we'll use an artist. If that's not, if that's true, then why, when you go to every museum, it's pretty much the same group of artists that that people that people have de determined that that's the best artwork. Because but, just, I totally the curators agree. talk to each other. Very my my feeling is that you guys are trying to dumb it down to the to the base medium level, and I don't want that. I don't yeah. ever want that. What what Ron wants is a, a commission show with a central sales booth like Oklahoma City. Then yeah, they invite yeah. back the okay. biggest sellers. However, yeah. even at Oklahoma City, there's really good artwork. So well, there is. Well, there is. Know. Yeah, and a lot of artists like the fact that if they do have a really good show, they get reinvited back because the fundamental concept of the art show they connected with the buyers of art. And is there something more important? Than that, because if if Barry or if any of us as artists connect well with the public, we really look forward to going back to that show. But based that your fate is based on jurors doesn't mean that you get to go back. It's going to depend on what opinions are given about your art next year. And that's a very bad business model, in my opinion. Barry, because the public's well, voice is silent. Barry, <clears throat> yes. Barry, you know, Van Gogh didn't sell a single painting in his lifetime. I know. That that's right. I know. Picasso, Picasso didn't sell much of anything I, until I, those buyers from New York found his work on exhibit, right? And then they bought, and then other people go, "Oh, well." If they would Marcel buy, Duchamp, then it, it's it's nothing to do with the quality of what they're seeing. It has to do with what somebody else says about it. But for people at an art show, to me, they're going to spend their hard-earned money. They're taking the time out of their day to come down to a show that the promoter put out information on. They come down there. They go through the parking issues. They come to the show, they walk the booth, they stop at Barry's booth, they see the ceramics, they go, oh my God, I love this. And they buy it. What more powerful statement do you want about what art is? They loved what you produced. Does that not matter more than what some jurors said? Maybe you were barely got into the show. Maybe you were waitlist and got in. Okay. But if the public loves your work, doesn't that go volumes to what you create? Okay. Okay. How do, you, that? How what do you figure the the person that sells a twelve thousand dollar piece a big 2d piece mm -hmm. sells nothing else the entire show and the person that has functional clay and sold the snot out of their spoon rest which they didn't jury in with you know hey. You're I'd rather sell the one twelve thousand dollar piece any day. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but I mean, you're not going to. I mean, so you're going to invite back the person that sold just one piece and the person that sold a boatload yeah. of his work that they didn't jury with. Wait a but minute. They Wait, shouldn't have been in the show. Hold they on a second. Throw it out. I, I always use the food analogy. You're talking about McDonald's versus uh, give me a nice high end restaurant in Fort Myers. You know, you know, you want all McDonald's. You want no, you want people. To no, a lot not at all. Not at all, Barry. I think you're misreading this. What we're saying and what is that about, the voice. Of, go ahead. Well, what about the the you know that falls apart a little bit when you've got like the buy sell garlic grater guy yeah. or, or buy sell anything right that's selling like crazy and and you really don't want to perpetuate that either 
But the, so that how did goes they back get to just general quality. How did they get into the show initially? They got juried in. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think. Ah, I think wait, no, no, I address that. Helpful. They got juried in. So what does that say about oversight by the promoter of the jury process? They fail. I can tell you what it says to me. It every, says, don't even get every, near that Every show jury ever process again. should have a, a art, an artist who is very familiar with with shows in that region so that they can can weed out some of those because I wouldn't expect an average juror whose whose expertise is in art but not in necessarily art shows to be able to look at four images and say uh, that they probably didn't make that. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, but a lot of times I think it's it's a little trickier than that. But when you're in the art shows themselves, you have a pretty good idea on who's who's faking it and who's not. But see, within the confine well, of the, the rules that the show sets up about what's allowed in the show and what's not supposed to be handmade by the artist that's in, present at the show, all those rules don't go away. They stay there. It just means that the artists that resonate the best with the public get reinvited. Those that don't, maybe the next group down gets a point or two added to their jury score for next year. And then those that didn't do very well at all go back into the jury pool and then you take your, your chances. But the show always is supposed to oversee the quality of what gets in, not only in the jury process, but as uh, Bonnie brought up in her example, if they're selling stuff that they didn't jury with, the show is supposed to walk around and go, hey, you can't show this work because you didn't jury with it. You're, you either get it out well, of your booth or you close up your booth and you're done. That's their role as promoters. No, right? and if a functional potter, there's no way a functional potter is going to show each and every little piece that they make. No, so the body of work. I have, I have no problem with a functional potter bringing spoon rests along with their mugs. That was I. not a complaint about, you know, what they were selling. That was just the smallest thing I could think of. Okay. Okay. On moment's notice. That's but then it doesn't matter if they sell the, the snot out of that because it's what they made. It's acceptable in the show. And the public just said that comes to the show based on the promotion that's done by the show. We really like this work. Why would you ignore what the public says? Because to me, that's exactly what you're doing. You say you don't care because you're not going to pay attention to what no. the public likes. Well, what you're they, getting rid of, what you're, what you're doing is it's a certain segment of the population, not the population. At any level, you're gonna get the, you're gonna get the people. Uh, if, it's, if it's all high-end artwork, you're gonna get people that are interested in that. When you start dumbing it down, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about potters, functional potters. When you start dumbing it down, the high-end, and this is how it's worked, you know, if in 40 years, if you get rid of, start getting rid of those high end people, uh, high end artists, uh, the, the the high end customers aren't going to come. They're, they're not going to show up. It's a slippery slope. And it's happened to 99% of all shows. There's only maybe 10 or 12 shows that have maintained the quality level of their shows. And everybody here knows what shows I'm talking about. And, and, um, and that, if it's up to me, there would be 30 of those shows because because since there's only 10 or 12 of them, it's it's really hard to get into them. And there should be more. There should be a, a more of a choice. Well, let me ask you this from your experience, because you've been on the show for a long time, Barry. Have you not run into artists that make phenomenal work, really yeah. great work? So none of this is a statement about their work, but they sell zero at every show. Yeah. Every I show do. they do. Why should they? Not, not every show, but they do. Most yeah. of their shows. And that goes across all mediums. I know of mixed yeah. media artists. I know of photographers. I know of all kinds of people that fall in that category. Why do you, if the jurors say, well, this is great work, and they keep laying a pound of work that the public walks away from and goes, this isn't what we're interested in, but they get invited back and or then they win an award and they get to come back. And it's a, it makes no sense. It just doesn't make sense. Whereas well, somebody else, like I was next uh, to the Ron. Pardon? Ron, if they don't sell and they don't sell and they don't sell, they give up eventually. Now they well, they eventually, don't, yeah, you don't apply. No. You go to where your market is, you know? Well, they don't, though. They, they don't give don't. up, Larry? No. They don't. How do they eat? How do they eat? Sure they do. <laughs> go ahead, Larry. Tell them. Because I'm with you on this. I totally agree. They'll be back. They they put out a lower, they put out a low cost line. 
to pay the bills. Not everybody, but a lot of them do. Okay. Or they win the selling. They're not, you know, then then hey. Then. Or they win the or they win the awards, and if you win a ten thousand dollar award, you've had a good show, and you haven't lost a single piece of art in the process. But the public didn't buy your work. Well, back 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 in the mid nineties, I used to sell four to five hundred small matted prints a week. Wow, but they were quality prints, right? I guess people loved them. Hey, you know, I make these little pieces that I sell for 150 bucks. And uh, when, you know, back in those days, I would sell 40 or 50 of them, you know, at a show. And that would be, I couldn't make them fast enough. Right. So, uh, and, you know, of course they were $40, but when you uh, factor in cost of living and, you know, it's not that much different than the 150 today. So, um, uh, you know, things have changed. I, I'd love to have, uh, I'd love to sell a, I don't know, 40, 40, 150 dollar pieces. Let me ask you this, Gary, too. Yeah. If an art, if a potter, functional potter, yeah. did 17 or 18,000 at a show by your standards, that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah. Last year I was at the first time I was in um Oklahoma City Festival of the Arts. Mm -hmm. The last the second year I was there, I was next to these potters every year. Yeah. And it, that was their third year. And at that time, it was not that they invited back the top sellers. You were in for mm -hmm. three years and then you had to re-jury. Mm -hmm. They when I ran into them that next time they weren't back when I was there my third year, they weren't there. Mm -hmm. When I ran into them later, they I said, Well, what happened? And they said, Well, we got juried out. And I said, Oh, well, if you don't mind me asking, how'd you do? And they said they did about eighteen thousand at the show. And they got, they got juried rejected. out. They got rejected. They got re they okay. got rejected, mm -hmm. but the public bought eighteen thousand dollars worth of their ceramics. Why should a jury override the voice of the public? L listen, be I, I have the answer because you give somebody else a chance to get in there. Don't look at. I'm going to tell you about. I love. I love the Oklahoma City analogy because I. I. I never did like more than four thousand dollars there, and uh, or forty five hundred, and and I never got invited back. But I got juried in every year. I did it about 10 years in a row. So, um, you know, and I still went back uh, because that 4000 was OK for me, especially if you, you know, uh, were going to Texas the week before or week after, you know, that's that series of shows. But then Oklahoma City wasn't saying that it, they had fun. that tier structure. They uh a kind of a tier structure, but it didn't mean that you couldn't get back in the show. It just meant you went. After your third year, you went back in the jury pool. And now Oklahoma City does the top 75% in sales get reinvited back. Now they don't mm -hmm. factor in post show sales. So if you're a painter and you do yeah, well, 5,000 at the show, but you do mm -hmm. 12,000 post show, the show's not going to know that. So <laughs> you're not going to be invited back. But how else do you invoke the, the interest of the public that the show advertises to and brings to that event that we all rely on? those people that come by art. How do you listen to their voice? How do you factor that in to a show? Well, you know, that's a problem because if I get into Fort Worth or Cherry Creek, I wish that I had it. I was in for three years or four, you know, you know, because, because for me, m much of my business is repeat business. So if I only do the show once every, every few years, or once, um, I that that repeat business is gone. I don't get that. So I'd like to have that. But on the other hand, Ron and and Frank, it's the rules are the same for everybody. And I might get I might be upset when I don't get into something, and and I'll deal with it by saying, oh, the jury sucked. The jury was uh, sucked, or they're stupid, or whatever. But that's just to make me feel better. And, and a week later, okay, this is, it's, it's fair. It's part of the, you know, my thing is, well, I got to make better work. And I eventually come back to that, um, you know, to that. Attitude. Barry, I, 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 I'm not agreeing with Ron in every respect. I was only saying that there are, there are, there are artists who would appeal to different audiences and, and art shows could very appropriately jury to the appeal of a specific audience mm -hmm. um 
And you... <clears throat> sorry, I I'm, <laughs> I'm biting my tongue, but <laughs> you guys, I'm sorry, and wrong spot. You, it depends who walks into the show. I can have a great show if my customer walked that day to the show. I can come back the next year after a great show and my buyers don't walk into the show and it makes it a shitty show. You don't have no control over who comes to the to the yeah. to the show. Also they might not want your artwork for the <laughs> next room that they decorate. If you good enough to get to the show, you always keep producing new work. Mm -hmm. The show should always start with high quality artwork and you work you down. If you did, you have a great show, there's no guarantee that next year you're going to have a great show. It doesn't matter. I don't know. You know, I only know one artist that does well year after year. And because he always brings something new, something better every year. It's not stagnant showing the same crap over and over and over. Well, let me ask and you this. Do you not have any shows that you do, Oscar? That every year it's really strong. No, you don't. No, no. no. But see, then your I, experience is different because I've had shows, and I think a lot of artists have had shows where every year when they get in that show, and it doesn't have to be a Cherry Creek or a St. Louis, it's your market, and you sell well to the people there. And every year you do really, really well, and you will be I, one of the top sellers in your category. But and if it varies, it varies between. 8,000 and 12,000 or 11,000 mm -hmm. and 19,000. It will vary, but it will vary at a level that you're more than happy with because the public, and again, the public to me is the number one ingredient in an art show because without them, you're going to have those bad shows all the time. Or Ron, a lot I'll give time. you one specific example. A client I had, I'm sorry, Oscar, go ahead. The thing that I said to you is every year, I go with the show with expectation that I did my part. This is how I approach the shows myself. I do my best work. I put my best foot forward. I put the best presentation I can. I do the, an effort to get to the better shows that I know they are good shows. Mm -hmm. And for the best. Once I get in there, I don't have no expectation whatsoever what's going to happen because I have no control who walks in my booth. And my attitude, the only thing I have control is my attitude and keep it positive to the entire show. But when, That's what when, like when you walk in, when you do the show and your end result is say you did 16,000 in sales, you don't have any hope or expectation that or thought that possibly because the public liked your work so well that you should have a second chance the next year because no. the public said, we like your work. No. Not, no. no. Okay. Uh, cool. Ron. Yeah. You'd be cool. So I had this Oscar, let me I don't know. Um, yeah. I had this client who a very good potter. Um and he attended the Bruce Museum show in Greenwich, Connecticut. So obviously a very high end audience, three years in a row, and he did really well the first two years, and the third year he sold zero. Um so there's there's this uncalculable, unpredictable element that goes in there. There is, there is, but how else do you factor in, and you deal with this in business for your clients, how do you factor in the voice of the market, the public that they're reaching out to? How does that factor in to every decision that they make? Because you don't have no control who comes to the show, Ron. That's the thing. You don't have mm -hmm. no control. Even the best promoters bring a lot of people. You don't know if it's that person that... that that's going to come in there is going to be buying your work. I can tell you that from the when I do the installations, I go to houses and every single room looks different. Right. It's but the, say, say you did really well at the show. Next year, people come back to buy your work and you're not there. And they ask the show, well, we bought a whole bunch of stuff from Oscar. We're, we don't find him. Is he at the show this year? And the show director is going to say what? Well, no because we had some jurors that decided to go in a different direction. And what are they supposed to do as patrons of the art? They're supposed to go, oh, well, maybe he'll be back next year. We'll come back next year. And maybe not. Do you know I what read that? that. That's, not what the, not, that's not what the show director is going to say. No, I'm, I'm sorry. He's not in the show this year. They're not going to give any explanation. Yeah. Nor because do they need number to. one, they're not going to remember whether he got 
rejected or whether he canceled or whatever. Is that going to register at all with the promoters, Bonnie? Because if the public is coming back looking for art that they bought and they want to buy more, what? Why wouldn't you, why, as a promoter, why wouldn't you care what the public thought, what they bought, especially not what they like, but what they bought? You know what's well, interesting is there are artists that will tell their customers before a show, if they didn't get in, to go to the information booth and ask for, for themselves and say, well, why isn't she here? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have to, I got to interrupt this. I had operated a show for 21 years. I have never had an attendee ask me about an artist. Never. We don't get that question on information booths. We, we, you know, they may come and say something, oh, Joe's not here, but that's the end of the conversation. I think this is all just really needs a reality check. I, I if you want shows to start start keep keeping who's going to come based on what people sold. I have no idea how the shows are going to find that out. And it violates, it's not what the prospectus is from anybody mm -hmm. that I know that runs a great show. And I guess I would suggest if you think that the work is so awful, Ron, go to those shows that you think are so awful and tell them that I'm not going to Cherry Creek and telling them there were artists are no good. I'm not doing it. <laughs> No, no yeah. that's not. That's so, not what you I'm know, I, I just think this is all my question in the beginning of all this was what can we do to help produce, help promote sales for you? That was my question. Whether you and think yes. more social media, you... more news press, new, newspaper, and more TV, more individual work with the artists. That was my question. But, but that's you what can... I to say. This is, this is so off. Really? I think, so the thing in, I I think in what the public thinks is off course. No, I don't think that's off course, but that is not our job. Well, and I don't know how minute. you think we are going to figure out how 200 different, pe different artists reacted with artists. I, the, way I, the way I know whether artists sold well is they reapply. There if are they other reapply, factors. they don't do well. I agree. And there are other factors yeah. here, Ron, that you're not considering. They're like, I, I ran a gallery uh, for 10 years. And we uh, we had people that sold really well, but we varied it. We we got new artists because people want to see different people. It isn't just the same people that sell sold. It, you got to change it up, and maybe it's somebody that sold a lot, but there's going to be somebody else, and then they'll sell a lot. You can't have the same people no matter what. And I like this conversation, <laughs> but you know, but I definitely have my opinion, and and you guys have have your opinions too. But I. You know, I think you're asking for trouble when you let the uh, when you let the public determine, um, you know, who's in the show and who isn't. I am My over opinion. the station. Sharon, uh, whatever you decide to do, teaching laws, how to do social media, I'm all for it. Just to let you know. Yeah, we do. I'm not going to tell you how many tens of thousands of dollars, but... It is that in social media and in online digital advertising, the kind of ads that you get when you Google red shoes and now all of a sudden you get all these ads for red shoes, that's online digital. Um, tens of thousands of dollars are going into that. So, you know, all targeted to the kind of people who buy artwork. So I think yeah, but... some credit to the shows and I've asked this question before, please don't call promoters. If you wanna talk about promoters, talk about Howard, Howard Allen and those guys. But the rest of us who produce individual shows like Cherry Creek and and uh, us and St. Louis and all the, that kind of shows find promoters as you calling us promoters as offensive as you find us calling you vendors. Mm -hmm. So, yes, please don't do that. We do not take it as a vending kind of business, right? And we take very seriously how you're how we promote for your buyers. We are not out to try to figure out how to not make you successful. So. But if well, you ever come, if what you told me in a few months ago, if if you, that you was thinking that probably you can teach artists how to do social media. Right, that's you, my question. How do we help support what you need? Yeah, if you teach me, you teach us how to do it, I would, because I, I spend the money every, week right. book 
promoting social media and I don't know if I'm getting anything out of it, but I would like to at least get an idea how to do it the right way so then I can see if it actually works or not. Because right. I, yeah. right. for me, that's it's the Instagram. kind of service we can be. You, you know, know that, that festivals can be have that kind of service if they want. Um, or writing yeah. artist statements, for example, or reviewing booths, for example. I mean, all those things that we can do. Uh, but asking us to monitor your sales is is a bridge too far. But again, like it's not an issue Instagram. of our sales individually. It's a statement of the public's <laughs> interest in the art that's exhibited. Whatever. I, I'm over this conversation. I, I me too. I really am. This this is way too philosophical and doesn't go to really helping you sell work. So, which is I'm going to let you guys go because I need to meet some people for dinner. Have a good night, and I'll see you guys next week. Good luck. Yeah, I'll see you in a week, Oscar. No, wait a minute. No. What day? What day is today? I won't see weeks. you until I thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see you really far away from me can't wait to see you <laughs> be good bye guys bye, bye. Sharon where can I learn about digital marketing the um, kind that comes not not Facebook but the kinds that comes up with your like I said yeah. red shoe example pink glasses yeah. example um that's tough to do. We we actually buy ours through an agency. Um, people like like uh, Gannett, they're probably up there. They publish the yep. news press here, right? They like the Star Tribune guys, but it's Gannett. Um, them, iHeartRadio, iHeartMedia. Oh, they yeah, they're up here. Radio stations. Well, actually, iHeartMedia is way bigger than radio. They have all kinds of other advertising stuff, like online advertising. Um, there's probably some marketing agencies in your area, but that's about the most expensive way to go because their fee is so high. Um, it's been my experience that either Gannett or, um, I think here they call it local IQ. I don't know if that's their national brand for Gannett for uh, online. That's what they call it here. Um, them or iHearts, what I would know. Thank you, I appreciate that. Hey, well, Sharon. Mm -hmm. What I'm what I'm wondering is, um, the, you know, the social media that you're talking about, does that like does that help the the whole show, or is it, or can in, do can do individual artists if they embrace that through through you or through the show, does that make a difference with them? Would that make a difference for with for me so, if so I say actually that, embrace say that them? over again? I'm sure I understand your question. Well. You know, you you do the social media thing. So you have, um, you, you know, you put the show out there and you feature some artists or whatever you do. Mm -hmm. But individually, I've kind of stayed away from it. But I, but I think, would this help me specifically? Would I do mo more sales if I embraced it 100% and, and was in tune with it and did and everything? Did it, that, and, did it your, and did it yourself? No, did it through the show itself. Yeah. Um. I don't know the answer to that, but I think it's a very interesting idea. We tried to test that. Um, I don't know. It was before COVID. must have been in 19, maybe 19 or 20. I forget. Mm -hmm. And we offered to do, we charged for it. I mean, we offered that if you, if you wanted to do that, uh, we would, we would write the copy for you to approve. We would use whatever image you wanted. Right. We said we were going to use your mm -hmm. number one image from zap unless you wanted something else. Mm -hmm. um, we wrote the copy and then we drove the traffic to um, your website or Facebook if that's what you had um, sometimes we included the booth number at the show kind of depended um, mm -hmm. to see what kind of results that would get it means that when we can see on our end how much traffic it generated online we can't mm -hmm. see how many people came to your website or to your booth and said, oh, I mm -hmm. saw your, this cool pot on this ad, right? We, mm -hmm. we can't track that without feedback from the artist. Right. So, but I think it would be a really interesting um, thing to try again of, of, of uh, how can we drive that? 
Wow. Yeah. Well, you know what? One thing I experienced this year is I've been off social media for almost since I got hacked last mm -hmm. last March. It was my own stupidity, but uh, it's kind of soured me. So I was off. I've gotten this. I've gotten the same amount of calls and interest from people that saw me somewhere or for whatever <laughs> as I did when I was actually doing social media. It's exactly the same. So yeah, it's hard to it's it, it hard to and it takes a lot of dedication, particularly if you're going to yeah. go after yourself. Those of you who know probably know Harry Roa, yeah. the jeweler. His wife Lily, um, yeah. is just about all she does is run their social um, mm -hmm. and keeps lists and keeps. She's incredible for what she goes back to as people respond to her. Um, she'll tell you that. It accounts for a huge amount of of, of Harry's new business. Um, I don't know. That's what she tells me. I go up, I've been up to Sarasota to visit with her several times about approach. So, but I think it'd be really interesting to know. Mm -hmm. And we we may try that again. We're about to do some some heavy planning for twenty four um, after this year's over, and that'll be one of the things on the list. That's board. That's board work. So that answers your question. Yeah. It's hard for all of you to do. You're busy trying to make artwork. Right? I know. I was going to say that. Out. I don't have time to do it, you know? Right, exactly. That's why Lily does it for Harry. So I didn't want to say that, but that's kind of how it comes, what it comes down to. So. Right, right. You don't have time. No. See you all next week. Bye, Frank. I miss Frank. Bye, Frank. Would you buy a leave too? No. Lively discussion. <laughs> Aren't they I all? I sure wish we would talk. They, never mind. I will be quiet. I, I <laughs> no, no. I want to hear what I want to hear what you have to say. Come on, Sharon. Well, I just think there's so many more things that that artists could work with festivals on doing that promotes everybody's success rather than an esoteric conversation. That's mm -hmm. all. I, I, you know, but whatever. This is Larry's, Larry's forum, not mine. Hey, you could change the topic anytime. Yeah. yeah. I was trying it to doesn't stop me, even, you know, even though it might be to my detrimental to my health, you know, it doesn't stop me from you know, talking, so. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get a bad reputation. <laughs> or a worse one. one of these. It, it's only a reputation. It isn't the reality. Just remember that. Is that good or bad news, Barry? Well, I think I perception, I think reality is better than perception. You know? Yeah, so. Well, yeah, Harry maybe. Rose, um, I'm on his website. I'm sorry, what did you say, Bonnie, at the beginning? I'm on sure. Harry Rose's website. Mm -hmm. okay. Really nice. <laughs> Harry has a gallery <laughs> on uh, Main Street in, in, Sarasota. in Sarasota, too. He Sarasota. has a major presence. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. What were you going to say, Bonnie? Well, I would have loved to have someone doing all this for me. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, you know, because they they keep. I know there's other artists who do this too. They keep um, really good email lists, um, buyers lists, um, digital birthday cards. Um, I'm, all kinds of stuff. Um, and it takes somebody to do that, right? Because the artist doesn't mm -hmm. have time uh, or probably the interest. Um, but it takes all that. And and that way, you know, he, he they kind of treat art festivals. I mean, he sells great too. I mean, it sells huge. But part of that is because he's developed, other artists do this. I'm not just making Harry, but um, 
because they have other lists. They send out to the yeah. list before they're in a town. They follow it up. They make appointments. <laughs> I mean, like they work it. So they kind of consider that half the success of the show is what they sell here and the other, any place, anywhere they are. And the other half is how many emails did they gather? How much interest did they get? How many people yeah. out, responded to their Facebook? Because they know that down the road, particularly true for jewelers, I bet you had this too, Bonnie, is that yeah. I saw your work at the show and I'm pondering it, you know, and then I decide, well, actually, I really did like that. I'm going to order it if you have a place for me to do that, right? Um, that's not just jewelers, but it's easy because it's easier to mail, small. But um, so that's the definition of whether the show is successful for them. Do they get plenty of contacts and all that? And then, of course, what they sell when they're there. So well, I lived and died by my mailing list. Yep. You know, I could tell you what show, what year, what uh -huh. show, what dollar amount they spent and any, you know, particularly important notes. And a lot of people bought from me in places not near where they lived. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I would pull, if I was doing a snail mail, which I did, yep, because back it when, just, right? frankly, it paid off. I could usually pull 25 to 30% of my sales from the show came from mm -hmm. that postcard. And I would pull from who I sold to at that show the last time I was there, plus the zip code, anybody that was near that zip code. Right. Right. And then I would hit the email list as well. Mm -hmm. It's and you can do it so, so effectively with Facebook, with social media ads right now that you didn't get to do back when you had to do it by mail, but you can do it by yeah. social now. And then you can target that. I want the people in, in our case, 33901 is our, our zip code. If we wanted to make it that tight, that's who we're going to send to. And I could yeah. make it be women in that zip code or, you know, people with children yeah. or whatever you're selling. So really powerful, but you have somebody that, that can... <laughs> And do it for you unless you want it unless you want to do it and that's the kind of stuff that i oh. uh, questions about whether we can help teach right how to do that well for our show that's coming up our mailing list now which we keep very clean yeah is at like 6137 people and these are all people that have been to the show and have signed up and we get a huge response from it. Now, is it fun putting on labels and stamps? No. Uh, no, but that's <laughs> Michael's job, so, <laughs> so I'm okay with it. <laughs> but we have, we also get their email addresses. So of course we do email blasts right. as well. But boy, I can't imagine not using sending postcards. Mm -hmm. Because it's a special, weird kind of show. But we have people that fly in from the East Coast mm -hmm. and the West mm -hmm. Coast to shop the Blasted Show. It's a sister's weekend gathering kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. very positive atmosphere between the, between the artists themselves and the customers themselves and the artists and the customers. It, it's very unique. It's funny. It's fun. <laughs> oh, geez. At this point, I want it over because I'm now at the point of, ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now's the time for it to be done, right? Yes. Us too. I would imagine you are a whole lot closer than I am. Yeah. Well, the good mm -hmm. news is that, that the festival's closer. It's mm -hmm. not my problem. I just get to go visit the artists and have a good time. Isn't that great? How it's does great. it feel? It's great. It's great. Like we talked about once before, it's kind of interesting because it's a, a different thing for founders than an employee, right? I'm just an executive director. So, but it's uh, it's great. So they're, they're doing a wonderful hey, job. Hey, Sharon, I'm totally with you on the director versus um 
promoter thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I saw the look on your face. You were trying to restrain yourself, but that that was great. That's that's how I feel when when uh, some of these shows say call us vendors. Yep, exactly oh, right. Hate it. Same thing. Same thing. That so. one drives me nuts. Yeah. And so it drives me more nuts when artists call themselves that. They'll call the office oh, or they'll talk to me somewhere and say. Oh, I'm calling how to be a vendor at, at your art festival. I'm like, oh, do you, what kind of food do you sell? <laughs> exactly. I write exactly. them back and I say, I'm sorry, we don't have vendors that right. <laughs> we only have our That's right. right. Yeah, if you can't call yourself the right thing, I. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. It's like photographers saying, I'm going to get more copies made. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's just like, really? Learn the definitions. Yeah, exactly. Well, some shows, though, if they're used to the shows that call them that, you know, that's the language they're going to use. I'm not doing any event that calls artists vendors. Well, <laughs> the last sort of show I did um, back in December, everybody was an exhibitor because it wasn't just items for sale. It was services and other things well i think it all depends on what the show is right i mean it yeah. depends on what the show is if the show is is marking itself as an art fest juried art festival oh yeah that's one thing that if it's true if it's if it's marking itself as a craft event that's something else or a street fair or well craft if it's bike, it's bike night that has art with it i mean too pardon me it, if it's a, if it's craft it should be artisan as well it shouldn't be vendor kind of depends they're on the allowing price. by sell i but love that word, are that there's some there's some crafters and there's some by sell in it right i mean so it just depends well, on what they, it depends on the show so I'm, depends on what they're doing yeah my whole thing is elevate yourself quit trying to mm -hmm. lower lower yourself you're worth more than that. Right. Okay, guys. I've had enough. Time to go. You got, you got a show to, to, to worry about, Bonnie. So good luck with that. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And hope it goes let's, great. let's hope for decent weather tomorrow, not snow, not rain, so that I can get out and have a last day of firing pots and come out with the best piece I ever did and, and have to tell people, I don't know how I got this. Well, good and luck to you. As opposed to standing out there in the rain and 30 degrees and going, Oh my God! What am I doing here? <laughs> well, you need you need to have a building built for your <laughs> press. There is a three sided building. It doesn't matter, you know. Well, a four sided a, one with a roof. <laughs> it's a health hazard. Well, good anyway, luck. Thank you. Okay, take care, I'll, everyone. I'll see you all. Okay. Bye. 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 -bye. All right. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.